speak of your glory Have a soul for your beauty If I dance it would be enough If I shout it would be enough I will speak of your glory I will show for your beauty If I dance it would be enough
To another edition of Family Life with Mama Rita. If you are outside and you are outside, Anna, it's raining cats and dogs this evening. It's something else. The whole place is flooded, the traffic is bad, but the Lord saw us through. Well, once again, last week we started the topic what not to do during worship what not to do during courtship with sexual sins and kissing sexual sins and kissing we looked sexual sins and kissing let me um yeah last week i should have warned you about the kind of things um i was coming to this card so you know the ages, um, your children, to get them involved. But this, th today I'm going very cool. Uh, last week was 18R. Today I'm going 16 and below. We will look at part two of what not to do during courtship. Last week, we did part one. We did sexual sins, and we did kissing. This week, we are looking at part two. So part two, I'm starting from number three. Number one was sexual sins. Number two was kissing. And then number three, domestic chores. Domestic chores. No cooking, underlined. No washing, underlined. No cleaning for him or her. No cooking, no washing, no cleaning for him or her. They are responsibilities of a wife or of wives. Or this time, let me add both wives and husbands. If you are not a wife, when you finish this, you must go to the next level of responsibilities. That is emotional satisfaction. After you wash, after you cook, after you clean up, then you would want to now move to the next. That is emotional satisfaction. That is where you move to the romance and sex. The kind of things I spoke about last week. Some guys will say, oh, I don't know how to cook. And I need my girlfriend or my fiancé to come and cook for me. Before you met me, what were you doing? Before you met me, you were eating. Continue to eat indomie. Continue to eat wache by the blue kiosk. Continue to take your cocoa and both fruit or akala. Continue to do that until we get married. If you want your fiancé to do that work for you, then you must marry her early. Then you can have somebody cook for you. You can have somebody wash for you. You can have somebody tidy up your room and your house for you. 
these days it's become a habit where to be mother-in-laws, they've become testing officers where they invite the women to come and cook so they see whether the man knows, how, the lady knows how to cook before she marries the son. Please, right after the honeymoon, we can start the testing exercise. We can start the examination and we can start the training. When I got married, I didn't know how to do the other type of um, okra soup. The one that you use at Deme and Boma. So my husband invited the mother-in-law to come and teach me how to... It invited my mother-in-law, that is his mother, to come and teach me how to cook the okra eve type. The one that you are eating and you have to cut it under. Um, and trust me, by the time I learned how to do it, I was doing it better than the way she even taught me. Listen to me carefully. It was through cooking that Amon got to rape his stepsister Tama. For those of you who do not know the story, Amon is one of the sons of King David. Ammon loved his step-sister, Tama, so badly. I mean, it's so badly. And you can clearly see that this is not love. In the definition of love, this is lust. So he requested from the king himself, from his father, that his sister, Tama, should come and cook and feed him. And I'm surprised King David couldn't see through the lines. He didn't mention anybody's name, Tama, to come and cook and feed him. And Tama did exactly that. He pretended he was sick, covered himself with a blanket in bed. Tama went to cook for him, fed him, I believe it was light soup, and soft fufu. Oh, chale, I feel for some. When it rains like this, in this weather, fresh, fresh fish like soup. Oh, Mrs. Collison, I miss you. Mrs. Collison will say, this is wicked. With hot pepper. And I believe that is what Tama did for her brother. Immediately, Tama finished feeding the brother, his sickness vanished and he raped his own sister. The sad aspect of it, immediately he raped. Then the love turned into hatred. My darling, we don't want a repeat of what happened in the Bible. The one you think you love, the one that loves you. If you are not careful, after going to cook and tidying up his home and washing for him, he would rape you. And now the love might turn into hatred. I am begging you. Number four. Number four. What not to do during courtship? I want everybody to listen to me carefully. Don't buy a prop in his name or her name. Don't buy a property in his name or her name. Don't buy a joint property. Don't open a joint account. We are talking about well you are caught in. Don't buy a property in his name. Don't buy a property in her name. Don't buy a joint property. Don't open a joint account. Please wait till you get married. I have seen people break up even a week before the marriage. 
I have seen people break up three days before the wedding day. So don't take things for granted. I was there one day when a lady in one of our choirs called me crying. I mean crying. I couldn't even control her on the phone. She was crying. What was her issue? She had this boyfriend. And everything, I mean everything pointed to the fact that they were going to get married and get married soon. The guy's parents have a property, a land. This lady began to put a house on the property land for the gentleman, hoping that they were getting married soon. And immediately they get married. They were going to move in into that house. The lady did the foundation, started laying the blocks, did roofing, did interior decor, did everything. Family members of the guy watched her do it. Immediately she was done with her house and she was waiting for the announcement of the wedding. Then the mother-in-law to be calls her and says that I, I, I want us to have a meeting. The lady was so excited, I mean so excited. She had already bought her gown, they had bought their rings, and she was so excited that they were going to fix the date. When they got, she got there, the gentleman's mother who saw the lady put up the house and knew the, the, the son didn't have money and it was the lady who was putting up the house, said, um, you see, uh, we are from this tribe and um, we from this tribe, we are not allowed to marry ladies from your tribe. My darling, the girl almost committed suicide. Unfortunately, the house was built on a family property. There was nothing she could do about it. She had to leave the house for the gentleman, the mother, and the family. She was there when the gentleman's wedding was announced. The gentleman was going to get married to somebody else. Somebody from the same tribe. My darling, shine your eyes. Things are happening these days. Don't say, oh, we love each other. Uh, we have met both families. I go to the house. The mother-in-law to be is very nice to me. And we chat and this, my darling. Even three days to the wedding. Anything at all can happen. Number five. Number five. Don't be lured to get pregnant. These days is becoming an interview. I don't know if you get a baby. I don't know if you have family enough. So um, let's try it. Please get pregnant. Immediately you get pregnant, we will fix the wedding, my darling. That is why we have what we call adoption. These days people are adapting. If you go into marriage and the children don't come, please go and adapt. If after you adapt, you, have, you get pregnant and you have a child, praise God, that is your second child. One of my young ladies here met this guy. This guy's mother kept saying that as for our family, before we get married to you, we should have seen 
that you are pregnant. Immediately you are pregnant, we go ahead, do the knocking, we will do the engagement, and then we will go ahead with the wedding. Oh, don't worry. This is my son. I want, I want grandchildren. I want to be sure that you are fertile. The lady, as foolish as she, she was in those days, now her eyes are opened. As foolish as she was in those days, also allowed herself. And remember my first commandment on what not to do when you are caught in is broken when you do that. Number one, sexual sin. And uh, when I was listing the sexual sin, number one on my list was fornication. So if you go ahead and get yourself pregnant, remember that you have broken the first rule, fornication. So the lady broke the first rule of sexual sin, fornication. Guess what? I want you to know that after you are pregnant, the pregnancy is not a guarantee. The pregnancy is not a guarantee that the wedding is coming on. This is a lady who had grown in the church, went through Sunday school, teen service, camp after camp. I was there. She came crying. She was pregnant. I said, okay, it's already happened. Now let's have the wedding. Said, mommy, there's a problem. I said, what is the problem? Said, now, the guy is being very funny. I said, what is funny? He said, mommy, I don't know. I said, call him for me. The guy came. The guy started some long story. And I watched my and I hanged my things. When I hanged my things, when I was going for my things, uh, my undies, my singlets, and my pants had been removed. Had been removed from the line. They left my shirts, my shorts, my trousers. For those of you watching from America, they left his pants. They left his trousers and shirts. So... The mother decided to go and find out who came for the singlets and the andes. Guess who came for it? The supposedly, I don't know, whether fetish or juju man or I don't know who they went to see, said it was the lady. And the lady was going to give it to her family to do juju. Here was the lady. She had committed the sin by fornicating. She had gotten herself pregnant. At least once a while people make those mistakes. And it can be covered up with a wedding. Now, first month of pregnancy. Second month of pregnancy. Third month of pregnancy. No show. Now the tummy started coming out. Started wearing maternity dresses. Till the ninth month when she had her baby. The guy didn't marry her. My darling, if you are there, I want you to find your eyes. Number six. Number six. Staying together or moving in together is more foreign than African. But these days, the Ghanaians are even doing it. Let's stay together and see whether we are, we are compatible. My darling, when you go through counseling, they will tell you if you are compatible or not. Don't move in with a guy. Don't move in with a lady. When you move in and you sit on the same bed, you have already finished 
the marriage bed. And the Bible says that the marriage bed is undefined. Please, wait till the wedding. I know people who have moved in, staying together. They stay together three months, stay together six months, stay together one year, two years, three years, six years. After the sixth year, after the gentleman has, has finished whatever needs to be, the gentleman comes back and says, oh, you cry, we are not compatible. Oh, you cry, you don't know how to cook. Oh, you cry, you don't know how to tidy up. You cry, you don't know how to, my darling, shine your eyes. If there's somebody sitting by you, I want you to scream into the person's ears, shine your eyes. Things are happening. I mean, things are happening. Things are happening. Number seven. Number seven. I forgot something about um, the number three. That is cooking, washing, tidying up. Assuming, assuming um, the family is organizing a wedding, the family of your in-laws, uh, your in-laws to be are uh, going to organize a wedding. There's a funeral in the house. Um, they are moving to a new apartment, a new house, and there's a bit of work. And they invite you as a family to come and help them. I think it's fine. It's courteous to go help them. You know, move things around, tidy up. And they are preparing for a wedding in the house, and they need you to come and help them you know, organize a few things, it is okay. But you don't go and the man is staying alone. Even if he's, stay, he's not staying alone and he's living with his parents, you don't go. Go and remove your dress. Put it around your waist. Pick buckets. Pick bowl. Take his things. I don't know whether you'll be kneeling or you'll be sitting to wash. Whether it's washing of hands or washing with the washing machine, let him do it himself. If he wants you to do it, he must marry you quickly. Please, we are ready. Our counselors are ready to take you through counseling. So number seven. Number seven. Number seven, and I want you to listen to number seven carefully. That will be my last point. Number seven, listen to it very carefully. Helping him or her financially. Helping him or her financially. With an ulterior motive, I want you to listen carefully. Helping him or her financially. This is very, very dicey. I would explain and I want you to listen carefully. I am not saying if the woman or the man is in the position to help, he shouldn't help. Listen carefully. If the man or the woman is in the position to help, he can do it, she can do it if she wants to. But listen, when you are helping, do it as doing it unto God. Listen carefully. Do it as doing it unto God. Do it or take it as charity. Take it as charity. Don't take care of him or her. 
Don't pay school fees with the intention of marrying her after school. Do it for God. If the woman, after being helped, listen carefully. If the woman, after being helped, wants to reward the man, wants to reward you, by marrying you, praise God. If the woman, after being helped, wants to reward you by marrying you, praise God. If the man wants to reward you, wants to reward you, the woman, after being helped with marriage, praise God. But don't do it expecting the marriage will come through by all means. Don't force the lady to marry you because you helped educate her. It is witchcraft. Like I said, the lady wants to reward you with marriage. Praise God. But don't be expecting it because sometimes the person doesn't love you. He or she was only attracted to you because of the help. What are some of the help? School fees. Accommodation. Laptop. laptop phone. I don't know the latest um, Apple now. Whether they've reached eight. They, no, I'm using ten. I'm using 10. So 11 Pro. Marketing. Accommodation. Daily, weekly, and monthly upkeep. Remittances from abroad. My darling, you are a lady, you live abroad. And the, the gentleman lives in, in Ghana. I don't know any other African countries. Ghana, I know. The lady lives in, the gentleman lives in Ghana. And every time the gentleman is asking you for money, starts by, oh, send me 50. Send me 50 pounds. Send me 50 dollars. Uh, you think $50, 50 pounds is nothing. You send. The next time, he says 100. The next time, he says, I have 2,000 for accommodation. If you can top it up for me with 5,000. He might not love you. Listen carefully. He might not love you. He might only love your money. After he's gotten what he wants from you, he will dump you. One time, one lady asked a question that um, she was in a relationship with a gentleman here in Ghana. The gentleman kept asking for money and money and money. After the gentleman got what he wanted, broke the relationship. Now she's met a second person and the second person is also asking for money. My darling, it's a red flag. They might not love you necessarily. They might love your money. So you need to be careful Money for hospital, money for surgery. So this is what I'm saying. If you are in the position, if you are capable of helping, nothing stops you from helping. But don't help with the intention 
of being paid. These days, women are paying with sex. Women are paying with going to wash. Women are paying by going to tidy up. Women are paying by going to wash clothing. The woman, if the man has helped me, then I need to pay back. If anybody is helping you, find out the reasons why the person is helping you. Is it charity? Is he doing it for God? Is it part of his offering? Or he's taking part of his tithe? I'm handling a case currently. And the lady, if you are listening to me, I would want to see you on Sunday. The lady comes from a poor background. After her JS, the parents couldn't continue to take care of her through the SSS. A good Samaritan came by and decided to start helping her. So the parents allowed the good Samaritan to help their daughter. Somewhere along the line, they fell in love. I mean, genuinely, they fell in love. The man did it with the intention of marrying, marrying her, but didn't make his intentions clear. But well, some way, somehow, somewhere along the line, they, they, they fell in love. The lady finishes SSS, moves to the nursing um, school, and the gentleman also paid the school fees. Now the lady is done with the nursing school and working. The gentleman is ready to marry the lady. The lady says, I don't want to marry you again. Is she being ungrateful? No. Because the intentions were not made clear. The reason why the lady want to marry this gentleman is because of blacks. The gentleman has become abusive. Verbal abusive. Physical abusive. And the lady is saying because of these red flags if you haven't been married you are not married to me and you've started showing these signs I don't know what will happen if you marry me. Now they broke up. A second gentleman comes the lady's way. And the lady's parents refuse to accept the gentleman. Because for them, their daughter is being ungrateful. My darling, it's better for the, the lady to work. Save enough money. Pay off her debt. After all, when we were in school, we were giving students loan. After school, snitch loan. After school, we paid it small, small. This thing happens in the UK, happens in the US, happens everywhere. So the lady can also pay small, small. It is better not to marry the gentleman. It is better to break now than to marry the gentleman and go and die. So if you're a parent, you're a mother, you're a father, and you are listening to me, please don't lead, don't lead your daughter into a wrong thing. In conclusion, in conclusion, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Verse 23, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, and I want you to listen carefully. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me, but not 
All things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. In other words, I have the right to do anything. All things are lawful. I have the right. You have the right to go and wash his things. You have the right to go and cook for him. You have the right to go and tidy up. You can say, I am morally legitimate to do anything I want. But not all things are helpful. Not all things are good for you. What we are saying, or what I am saying, this might not be sin, but it's just not wise. This creates the temptation for you. It might not be helpful. It might not be good for you. I have the right, but not all things are spiritually edifying. And not all things are beneficial to you. We are not saying it is a sin, but it is not edifying to you as a Christian. It is not beneficial to you as a Christian. It is not helpful to you as a Christian. It is not good for you. God bless you. Next week, I will come your way with what you must do during courtship. Last week, we did what you shouldn't do during courtship. And what we shouldn't do, we spoke about this, the, 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 the sexual sins. We spoke about the sexual sins. And then we also spoke about kissing. And then this week, we have gone into part two. What you shouldn't do. Domestic chores. Don't buy a property together. Don't be lured to get pregnant. Don't move in together. Don't stay together. And then don't help him or her financially with an ulterior motive. If you are helping him financially, help him because you are doing it unto God. Help him because you want to do charity. Thank you and God bless you. I will take, I will take a few questions and then we'll take a few questions after the break. And then I will come your way with a question time. Thank you. Power line, I shall phone you now. Yaminsha Munina. Power line TV, Eddie Jumedia B. Air Bro, I will fear him. Yatuni didn't say, O Christoni, any a mamre. O Christoni, winning one mamre. O Christoni, winning one man ye. And I said, Possa, Christoni, or yet a man ye, any a mamre. Siame, Juadawe, and a Juadabia, non son pepe, Nayan Shia, the our power line TV, so now be a shrabby brie, Yamin Shrao. Hello, lovely viewers. This is Powerline TV, and we are glad to bring to you Heal Our Land. God's word assures us if my children who are called by my name will humble pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and heal their land heal our land is going to be airing live on powerline tv for the coming weeks on tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays it's a program to bring you hope and assurance the world is contending with a major force the world is battling with a disease that we have no clue of getting solutions to it but god gives us victory and solutions to every problem the apostle general reverend sam crunchy ankram mama rita his wonderful wife and their wonderful sons and daughters will be gracing the studios 
and blessing us with revelations and giving us words to encourage us, to give us hope and faith in these trying moments, to help us overcome the fear of coronavirus or COVID-19. I know that you will be blessed. You'll be catching us live on Proline TV on the same days, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. prompt. One hour time of revelation, one hour time of victory, one hour time with the Lord. It's going to be wonderful. I will be your host, Pastor Arnold Abraham, and you'll be catching us live on all the social media streaming platforms and on Powerline TV. Remember, Powerline TV, power from life. And this is Heal Our Land. Welcome back from our break. We've been treating what not to do during courtship. Last week, we did part one of, of what not to do during courtship. We looked at all the sexual sins, and then we also looked at kissing. Now, kissing has become an in thing, and most people think that it is normal. Everybody is doing it, so we can also do it. We went into it last week. And this week, I did part two, what not to do during courtship. Thank you, Pastor Chivape. Thank you very much, Moni. God richly bless you. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you are still watching us, this is Family Life Series. You can get your questions coming through. Plus 233 Get talking on all social media handles all networks, all platforms with a hashtag family life. This is a wonderful location and we have a lot and a lot of questions. Coming wow. So wow. We, we people on Facebook say you are looking awesome. Oh, thank they you. They are loving it. Thank you. Thank you. Make a date with us coming Saturday yeah. at 3 p.m. Teen Inspiration. Teen Inspiration. Teen Inspiration. It is a time with our teens from... Um, age 13 through 19. Um, powerful time every Saturday at 3 p.m. And then also on Sunday, same time, 3 p.m., Bible, Bible Land, a time with our children. Bible Land, a time with our children. Please gather your teens every Saturday at 3 p.m. And then your children every Sunday at 3 p.m. with Bible Land. Well, we'll go straight to our first question for tonight. It says, good evening, mommy. If he visits me and we cook and eat together. Is it wrong? It is very wrong. Just the same way you can't go there and cook. Even cooking together. Leave the cooking together when you marry. There's so much you must do when you marry. Please. After cooking together, then you would want to move into other things together. After cooking together, you would want to do other things together. Proverbs chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 27 and 28. It says, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can you go and cook together and not end up jumping on the bed? Not saying thank you. Not saying thank you. <laughs> Can one walk on hot coals and his, his feet not be see, seared? My darling, certainly after a nice fufu, soft fufu, soft fufu with fresh fish like soup, after he's eating it and beating his fingers, my darling, he would want to reward you. Let's wait for the reward. So please, wait. Don't do the practicing of cooking together. After you've done the holy kiss on the altar together, and you have taken holy communion together on the wedding day, now you can go ahead and cook together. So, so mommy, this is a follow-up question to that. Um, sorry. I had met um, my wife in the early stages. Uh, she was in school. Okay. So I'll pay her visits in the hostel 
um, buy a few stuffs, we'll do cooking together, we'll eat, we'll pray. Makra, you need you need to go to the altar and confess your <laughs> sins. Um, if God is if God delivered you, my darling, it's not everybody that is strong enough. If you visit your your lady, you visit your lady and your lady has food and decides to serve you, praise God. But I believe that your lady must serve you in the company of her roommates. Or roommates. Yeah. I know how university rooms are. I don't know where you cooked. Whether in the back corner. Whether it's one in a room or two in a or room. Or one in a room or two in a room. <laughs> or there was a kitchenette attached. Hey. And normally the kitchenettes are very close to the bedroom. <laughs> Pentagon. <laughs> When you finish, you jump on the bed. <laughs> My darling, let's avoid these things. So, so somebody has quickly sent a follow-up and said, <laughs> so mommy, if we can't even cook together, then what can we even do during courtship? That is make, what I'll be doing fun? next week. Okay. Next week, I'll be coming with what you must do okay. during courtship. Next week, please make a date with me next mm. week, same time, mm. next week, Wednesday, what you must do during courtship. The truth is, a lot of people do not know what to do during courtship. Okay. They think that courtship is becoming boring. What should you do during courtship? I will come your way same time next week, and you'll be surprised the kind of interesting things you can do during courtship. Thank you. So this question is coming straight away from Sierra Leone. Wow. A brother by name, Abraham. Thank you for watching us across the globe. He says, good evening, mommy. Is it advisable to marry someone when she already has a child from another man? We are both in love, but I'm confused. The truth is, we all make mistakes. Everybody, um, once in your lifetime, you might have committed, you know, one sin or the other or one mistake after the other. If the person made a mistake, has learned the lessons, has confessed her sins, who are we to judge the person? Number two, who are we to you sit against her? I believe that there's nothing wrong with going for somebody who already has a child or has two children. There's nothing whatsoever wrong. I believe that she might have made a mistake or something went wrong with the first relationship. If you truly love the person and you have prayed and you think God is leading you to marry her, praise God, please marry her. And in marrying her, I said it in one of the um, episodes, I've forgotten which of them, that when you are marrying her, you marry her, you marry her dog. I can't marry my husband and say that if my husband had a child before the marriage, I love my husband, but I don't love that child. Mm. My darling, the child of your husband is your child. The child of your wife is your child. So start having a relationship with that child now. Make sure that you build your, your friendship with that child. And trust me, by the time you marry, the child will already be calling you daddy. Awesome. Good evening, this one says. Please, we've been dating for the past three years, but she has this very unpleasant temper. We've spoken about this, I've complained a couple of times, yet she hasn't changed. Whenever I do something wrong, she flips and it's all over. But when she does the same thing for her, it's okay. I'm thinking of leaving her because I can't deal with the fact that she also thinks she is better than I am. Is this a very bad reason to quit the relationship? Go back to my message. You can go to the YouTube. You can go to Sam Kranchiankra on Facebook. I did red flags, red flags, and I handled this into detail. Go back, listen to it, and then see what I said concerning these things. Anger, what to do, how to handle it, um, how to call her for a meeting, the prayer, the Bible quotation, 
And if after everything you think that she's not changing, you have every right to walk out of her life. Thank you very much. This one says, good evening. Mommy, a little deviation from tonight's topic. Please, is family planning a sin before God? I am confused in marriage. Please go back to last week's message. I did um, family planning. Depend, it depends on your religion and the church you go to. I know that among the Catholic church, um, family planning is a sin. Um, I hope I am right. Family planning is a sin. Um, but among the Pentecostals and the Charismatics, family planning is not a sin. Thank you. This one says, that was amazing. Mommy is on point. Thank you. I was able to relate to so many things you have said tonight. Mm. The joint account, the moving in together, the pregnancy to show fertility, the being grateful aspect. I am a living testimony. Wow. You are blessing wow. people, mommy. Um, before you go over yes, to your yes. question, if you have a testimony and you think that you are not shy of the testimony and you would want to join me um, in the studios to share your testimony, um, I'm doing a lot of practicals. I mean... Um, I believe that sometimes people would want others who have been through it. Um, they have a living testimony, what has come out of the relationship. So I would, I'll be very, very grateful if you can call um, the, the numbers on the screen. Um, if you are ready to share your testimony, you have gotten over it and you are ready to come to the studio, you will join me. And then we will share your testimony and what has become. And I believe that you'll be blessing and you'll be saving the lives of hundreds and thousands of other young people. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, mommy. This one says, thank you, Mama Rita, for your teaching. I am married for two years now, but I do not enjoy my wife during sex because she's infected by a sexually transmitted disease. I knew before our marriage, and we were very hopeful this was going to be dealt with, but we've tried all kinds of medicine, and there is no improvement. I feel like going out sometimes, but I love my wife. I'm very confused. What should I do? Please don't go out. This is very simple. I believe that you are not doing the right treatment. You are not um, doing the right thing. Please see a, a gynecology. Please do. This is very, very, very simple and um, very, very simple thing. They will do a test. Um, I believe she hasn't done any tests. They will do a test, find out what the problem is, and she will be given the right medication. Please. Um, if you don't know who to see and you live in Accra, you can call um, our office lines, um, give them your number, and I'll call you. Um, after the meeting, or you can see me with your wife if you live in Accra. You can see me with your wife on Sunday after 11 a.m. This is something very, very, very easy. And we need to start treating it now before the children come. That is, if you don't have children yet. Sometimes it could even affect her childbearing. It's something very simple, it can be handled one touch. Thank you very much, mommy. There's another question on family planning, interestingly. This one says, hello, Mama Rita. Thank you for being a blessing to us in these difficult times. Please, my question. I have been married for nine years, okay. and the Lord has blessed us with three beautiful kids. Wow. My partner and I decided to end it there. So we went for a family planning option, IUD, for 10 years. Wow. Unfortunately, after the second year, I developed health problems. I told him I wanted to take it off, but he is in no agreement to this. Please help me in a way to make him understand because he's watching also. I currently am dealing with lower abdominal pains. Help me, mommy. Okay. Um, if you are listening to me 
and you are doing family planning and the particular one you are, not, you are doing is not working, I want you to know that um, there are different forms of family planning. Please listen carefully. There are different forms of family planning. If one is not working, the other would work. Number two, when you go to do the family planning, you are supposed to, even if it's for 10 years, it's not advisable that you wait after 10 years to go for a check. Year after year, you have to go to the family planning office or to the family planning clinic. Let them check if everything is okay. Maybe it's moved a bit, the coil has moved a bit, or it's become infected. Sometimes it gets infected. It can be removed and then another um, um, one, or they can teach you, or they can show you other forms of family planning you can do. And men listening to me, if one is not working, try the other. Don't force your wife to do a particular family planning all the time. There, there are so many um, types out there that you can do. And when your wife is going to the family planning hospital or the family planning clinic, please go with her. Please go with her, listen together, and then um, what is best for the two of you will be done. I think it's not fair for your wife going through pain, abdominal pain, or going through one infection, um, one infection or the other, and that you don't seem to understand what she's going through. Please, um, if you are listening to me, don't waste time. Today is Wednesday. You can book an appointment tomorrow with the family planning um, nurses or doctors. They will check if it's infected. They will take it and then put another one. Or they will show you other ones you can do that you will not have problems. Thanks so Otherwise, much. Otherwise, go through the natural one. Mm. The one that you use your menstrual cycle to check, and um, that's the Catholic way. And um, when you are not ovulating, the then period. your safe period. So you can also do that. But safe period, if you don't calculate it well, hmm. uh, don't know. I, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I, I am so happy. I'm not going through this season again. <laughs> oh my God. It was, it was headache. Checking your menstrual cycle mm. and when you can, the right time and which um, family planning to you. Oh my God. Well, I'm sure Pastor Eddie will want to come and share testimony on Pastor that. Eddie will want to come and share testimony. Mm. Pastor, Eddie. Pastor Eddie, I'll be waiting for you for your testimony. Please, like I said earlier, I'm waiting to bring people to the studio to share no, their testimony. Who will bring him? So, Pastor Eddie. What about you? Morocco rep. <laughs> <laughs> so, mommy, this one says, <laughs> good evening, mommy. What will you advise? I'm currently, okay, he mentions the country. He said, I'm currently in Korea. Wow. And I am dating a young lady who is two years older than I am. I have considered this in <laughs> prayer and I've had dreams that affirm that she's the right person but I'm still confused kindly assist this person is a foreigner as well my darling confusion about this um, you can marry someone um, up to five six years if that person is a lady but I always tell the ladies if you are older than the gentleman. You must have a way of dressing up. You must have a way of styling your hair. You don't style your hair to look very old. And there are people, um, some, today somebody is celebrating um, 69. And when I was asking her age, I thought she was about 62. Wow. Only for her to tell me she's 69 today. I was so shocked. She looks around 60. So you can have somebody who is two years um, older than you and it might not show in any way. So my darling, if you have prayed and you have, you have the prompting and the leading of the, of the Lord, please go ahead. There is nothing wrong 
with marrying a lady two years older than you. Like I said, the lady would only would know, must know how to dress up to always look very young, to always look younger than you, to always look um, younger than her age. Um, though I am two years younger than my husband, when we were going to get married, he had such a baby face, like Reverend Derek's face. Oh my God. And at the time I felt I looked older than him. So I decided I would change the way I dress, the way I do my hair and all that. So on the wedding day, most people going for weave ons and all that. I decided that I wasn't doing weave on, I wasn't doing anything. I was going to use my natural hair. In those days, I used to do what we call the jerry curls. So I had my jerry curls and my hair was short. And everybody was surprised. I think I was the first person, well, I don't know if there was any, I was the first person I know that used the, her own hair to do her wedding, my own short hair, and I wore the veil. And I looked so young at the time, I looked, I matched him. And then after the wedding, I made sure that every time I did my hair, every time I dressed up, I didn't wear clothes that would make me look like, you know, somebody's... No grandmama dressing. No grandmother's dressing. I think that's where my dressing started from. Ish. And I've kept it till now. Sharp. So you need to know how to dress up to match um, the gentleman. Thank you, mommy. This one says, please, he pays my school fees, mm. my upkeep, mm. my rent. Mm. Everything is fine. Hey. He's gone for the marriage list, and we are preparing towards marriage. But mommy, we've committed the thing, son. <laughs> we are both feeling very guilty. What do we do? Please go back to my message, I think, last week. Last week, I mentioned the sexual sins. If you've committed the things, uh, um, get um, a peace offering, go to the Lord, go to the altar, and present the peace offering before God. Confess your sins. I mean, confess your sins, both of you, before God. And then promise God right there on the altar that you won't go back to those sins. So go back to the YouTube, go back to Sam Kranchiankra on Facebook, listen to my last week's message and see, is it last week or last two weeks? How, I think last two weeks. Last week, how I handled um, the sexual sins and what you must do. Even if you are married, but you did a sin before the marriage, you still are living in sin. So go before the Lord Go and confess your sins. Go with a peace offering to the Lord and then ask the Lord to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and cleanse you of all sin. That this will not, you know, this sin will not keep following you. And like I said, some of these things will be a mistrust. You will never trust each other. But I believe that if you both do this thing, go before the Lord, confess your sins together, give the Lord a peace offering, and ask the Lord to cleanse you of all the mistakes and the sins you committed, certainly he will do it. Certainly the Lord will do it. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that after then you don't go back to it. Yeah. So all the things that were leading to you doing it, going to cook for him, going to tidy up his room, going to lay his bed, Certainly, after you've laid the bed, you, you want to bed. find out how, how, how smooth the bed sheet the is. Density the density. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mommy, this one says, I am Bernard. I got married last year. Two months after marriage, my wife keeps disrespecting me. Oh, my God. She talks to me anyhow, and this started when I lost my job. I don't remember actively seeking God's faith for marriage. I sometimes feel I made the wrong choice. Since we do not even have a child yet, I always see her behavior to interpret the fact that she married me because I was working in the gold mine then. She goes out telling people about our marital issues 
I am currently a fed up husband. Help me. Please, um, it will be difficult to tell you everything you must do right now. You need a, a counselor. Um, if you belong to the same church together and you have marriage counselors in your church, please uh, book an appointment with your marriage counselors. Otherwise, if you have um, a matured pastor who can handle uh, marital issues, you can see your pastor and then um, tell the pastor um, about it. If you are in Accra, you don't have a marriage counselor, you, be, you don't belong to any church, um, there are no counselors in your church, your pastor you think will not be able to handle it, please come to Royal House Chapel or call our numbers and we'll get you one of our seasoned marriage counselors to handle you. Well, this one says, Mommy, for you are indeed an inspiration to us and you are helping our marriages. Thank you so much. I am currently watching from Nigeria. Wow. My question is, what about a situation where a man, instead of going for... Well, I think this is a question you had answered uh, before, okay. but I will still ask. Going for a family planning... He prefers pulling out. Is it also a sin? I think you answered this. I answered week. it yeah. um, last week. And then I forgot about something. Um, if you're a lady and you are watching me, if you're a lady and you are watching me, when everything was okay with your husband, you respected him very well. Today, He's not working, there's no income coming. And because of that, you are not respecting him. I want you to know that the tables will overturn. There'll be a change. When I met my husband, my husband was, was doing national service with the Ministry of Education. And I was working in the bank. If I had disrespected him, he was only bringing national service income home. And I was bringing a bank salary home. I've been doing this by now. In spite of the fact that my salary was more, I still gave him his respect. I respected him as my boss. I respected him as my husband. I respected him as the head of the family. I respected him as the father of my children. Though I was working that income, I still, you know, made him take the financial decisions. I would work and then bring him the money. Years after things changed, he got a better job. And his salary was about seven times mine at the bank. Assuming I had disrespected him when he didn't have money. Trust me. When things worked out for him, I don't think he would have... He, he would have still loved me or he would have still been the man I know him to be or I don't think he would have been a caring husband. My darling, things change. Things change in life. The man you are seeing him today, tomorrow he might get a job. He might rise up again. Today he's falling. But I'm prophesying to that man, if you are listening to me, I am prophesying to you, don't give up. Don't look down upon don't be discouraged. I am here to let you know that you would rise up again. You will get a very good job again. Amen. And then now we will see. But like I said, um, if you belong to a church, go and see your pastor. Or if you have a marriage counselor, see your marriage counselor. Or if you don't have a marriage counselor, you don't belong to any church. Or you think your pastor can't handle it. Make a date with us, um, Royal House Chapel. We will lead you to one of our seasoned marriage counselors. Thank you so much, Mommy, for that admonition and encouragement. As a matter of fact, whilst you were addressing this, there were about two other questions that on men getting disrespected. So, Vincent and George, I'm sure your questions have also been answered. And Mommy's <laughs> prayer is going to manifest in your life. Amen. Amen. This one says, good evening, Mommy. Please, I'm 26 years, 
and I'm still a virgin. But I keep losing every guy that comes my way because I was taught recently and I refuse to wash for them, I refuse to cook, and I do not give in to sex, of course. I am very happy to have heard this from you two today. But what do I do? Because this keeps getting me losing the men. My darling, trust me, it's not the sex. Anyone who will come and not marry you because you don't give in to sex, even if you give in to sex, they won't marry you. Anybody that breaks up with you because you don't watch for them, you don't cook for them, you don't tidy up, trust me, if you do these things to, for them, they will still dump you anyway. It's not about it. It's not about it. Check. There's something you are not doing right. Maybe you don't know how to talk. Maybe you don't know how to talk. Maybe you talk to them anyhow. Maybe you expect too much from them. Maybe you demand too much from them. Um, if it's also a spiritual problem, um, we do deliverance in Royal House Chapel. If it's, if it's spiritual marriage, uh, you always dream people are sleeping with you. You dream you are married. You dream um, you have children. Um, you dream you are pregnant. I want you to know that there's a spiritual marriage and it could affect your marriage and it could delay your marriage. You can walk into the gates of Royal House Chapel and we will take you through deliverance. So please, it's not about you not giving in to sex. 26, you've done so well. I clap for you. Keep your virginity until your wedding day. And I see God coming, coming strong for you. Very soon, you will get a correct guy. Amen. You'll be hooked up. Amen. Very soon, you'll get married. Amen. Don't give in. Don't break your virginity. Don't go washing for them. Don't go tidying up their room. Um, all that. And then you yourself... Do self-assessment. Um, go back to YouTube. Go back to some Kranchiankra um, on Facebook. And then some of the red flags I did. Go through it. Maybe, you know, you have an issue or problem with one of them. Thank you very much. This question says, greetings, Royal House Chapel. <laughs> greetings. <laughs> I am called Ingali, watching from Cameroon. Wow. Thank you very much, Ingali. He says, please, what should you do when your family members hate your girl you intend to marry and have made it very clear that they hate her? Wow. If they hate your girl, um, what is it about the girl they hate? If there's nothing about her they hate, but they just don't like her, they just don't like her because they don't want you to be married to her. They don't like her tribe or there's something. Um, what you have to do is, number one, start praying about the relationship. Start praying that your family would accept her. And then um, what you can also do is you can get an elderly person, maybe your family, hey, maybe your pastor, maybe an elder or somebody in the church or in the family to speak your parents or your family members about it. But don't joke about it. If you have prayed, if you are sure you have prayed, you have prayed and the Lord is leading you to marry her. Number one, stop about it. That your wife-to-be or your girlfriend or your fiancé would have favor before your parents. Number two, they would accept her as your wife-to-be. And then number three, um, after you've prayed and you are sure that the Lord is leading you, um, either your pastor or an elderly person in the church or family to talk to your family about it. Thank you. Mommy, I think we can take about two or three more questions. Um, and yes. if you are listening to me, if we don't get to answer your questions, don't worry. After this episode, next week I'm coming your way with what you must do during courtship. And then after we are done, just like we did during the um, red flags, then I will come in with seasoned um, counselors and then we'll answer some of the questions we couldn't, I couldn't do. 
Thank you very much. This one says, I am from Sierra Leone. Wow. We are getting a lot of our people We are from getting Sierra a Leone. lot of people from Sierra yeah. Leone. Several questions from Cameroon and Nigeria wow. as well. I am in a relationship for 13 years. Hey. A relationship, not marriage. <laughs> no, relationship. Relationship. <laughs> Did the person start when he was 10? <laughs> 13 years. Wow. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations. Says, but the man said he wants to marry me next year. However, he's too temperamental. You survived the 13 years. Even when you make fun of him, he gets angry. And this can be another thing altogether. Wow. Please advise me, Ma. Um, I would also say again, go back to my message on red flags. We treated these things. If a man is temperamental, a woman is temperamental, what do you do? It's a red flag. Some of the red flags, um, I don't know if he's temperamental. If he gets temperamental, whether he also gets physical, um, if it's physical, um, I, handled it. I handled it. You need to walk out of the relationship before he kills you. But if it's something that can be handled, go back, listen to the message on the red flags. And I believe I'll be able to help you how to handle your relationship. Thank you very much, Mommy. Our final question for tonight's episode says, Good evening, Mommy. You're looking great. Thank you. I am dating a guy who is very good. He cares for me a lot. He's God-fearing. But I have one problem. He has a very poor educational background. What should I do? She didn't mention what level she is or the man, but say it, it will be very, very important to know the the... Gap. The educational gap is so, so important. Um, if you can call us backstage, I will be able to... Um, number one, is he somebody in spite of the educational background or the educational gap? Is he somebody you'll be proud of all the days of your life? Assuming God raises you and you go for conferences and you go with him when he speaks the English, um, would you be proud? Um, you need to um, look at all these things. Is he somebody your parents will accept? Number three, is he ready to upgrade himself a bit? There are people that left off not because they didn't want to go to school, but they didn't have anybody take care of them. Is he ready to upgrade himself a bit? Some people, these days we have um, adult education. These days we have matured learning. Um, uh, people go to university at age 30. I went to the university um, at age 40. So if he's ready to go back to school, why not? Um, and then if he's ready to learn, um, some people haven't gone, but if you correct them, they don't have a problem. But there are others who haven't gone. If you don't know and you go and correct them, you'll, be, uh, you'll have a problem with them. Please make a date with us coming Saturday at 3 p.m. Coming Saturday at 3 p.m. Teen separation. I hope I mentioned it well. Teens and separation. Uh -huh. So it's inspiration. Um, this coming Saturday at 3 p.m. Every Saturday, make a date with us, with your teens. Um, let's learn together. And then on Sunday, Bible land with our children. So the teens from 13 to 19, from the age of 13 to 19, and then Bible land, um, children um, from three years old, to about 12 years, you can make a date with us every Sunday at 3 p.m. Next week, I will come your way. What to do when you are caught in? What to do when you are caught in? Now that you know what you shouldn't do when you are caught in, I believe that you are now ready to, you are now ready to, 
to listen to what to do when you are caught in. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Same time, God bless you. Tomorrow, Thursday, uh, Pastor Arnold, our host for Heal the Land, will be coming your way with a bit of preaching and a bit of prayer time. And it's doing so well. And then Friday, we have a miracle service with Apostle General himself. We are having testimonies after testimonies. I mean, the kind of testimonies we are, we, we are having from our Friday miracle service is something else. It's mind, mind, mind blowing. So many people have written uh, messages to me about the kind of spiritual battles they are going through. And I ask them to log on um, on Sam Kranchiankra, Facebook, or Powerline TV, or YouTube, Sam Kranchiankra. And the kind of testimonies they've had. Make a date with Apostle General coming Friday at 7 p.m. And your life will not be the same. Your hosts, Family Life Series with Mama Rita. God bless you. Powerline TV. Power to transform lives. People who always forget what God has done yesterday as soon as they have a challenge today. Today I rebuke you. It is called the spirit of ungratefulness, the spirit of ingratitude. You pray that you say, God, give me husband. Now look at your attitude in a marriage. Give me wife. Look at the way you are treating your wife. God, give me children. You went for prayer meetings. Oh, God gives you a child. Look at the way you are treating the children. God doesn't do business with people that he blesses yesterday and then today they forget him when challenges and troubles come how many of you are blessed to be here tonight lift your hands with me one more time hallelujah how can i express my gratitude for all the many things you've done for me.